I just wanted to do a quick reaction video to the updates from OpenAI dealing with their new GPT-4.0 model. So this is a little bit different. The O stands for Omni in that it's something that's very powerful and it's going to be available to everyone. So even the free users will now be able to access this new, very powerful new GPT through their free chat GPT AI. So the big thing that we have to think about here is, okay, now that there's these new capabilities, what does that mean for academia? Does it change anything? So I'd like to go through what they've released, what they've talked about here, and talk about how this affects academia. So let's go through this together. Today, we'll be releasing the desktop version of ChatGPT and the refreshed UI that makes it simpler to use, much more natural as well, because we want you to be able to use it wherever you are. As you can see, it's easy, it's simple, it integrates very, very easily in your workflow. Along with it, we have also refreshed the UI. We know that these models get more and more complex, but we want the experience of interaction to actually become more natural, easy, and for you not to focus on the UI at all, but just focus on the collaboration with ChatGPT. Now the, the actual interface is going to improve and it's going to be, there's also going to be a desktop app. And so they want us to not even be thinking about that we're using an AI, it's just going to be integrated and so much easier. So this is a powerful thing for academia to think about as well, because the idea of banning an AI is going to become more and more uh, it's non-existent simply because it, we won't be able to, even if we wanted to. Why? Because of the integration. It's going to be part of everything. Uh, the last video I talked about talked about search engines, and it's going to be integrated even more within that. So now we have to think about, well, we can't ban it, and it's going to be integrated. It's even going to be more difficult to say, no, you can't use AI with your assignment. Why? Because it's going to be in everything. Imagine that. It's in the search engine it's in the word processor. It's in, even if a student doesn't want to use it, it's going to be very difficult. So that's something to be really thinking about as far as how we present the information, how we create our assignments. So keep that in mind, and we'll come back to that as well. You know, it really has that capability across the board to perceive your emotion. Not only that, though, the model is able to generate voice in a variety of different emotive styles, and it really has a wide dynamic range. So I'm going to fire up another demo awesome. for that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, ChatGPT, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? Pretty good. What's up? So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte was a curious robot, I always like exploring- started this story, but I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Got it. Let's add some drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named no, Byte. No, 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 ChatGPT. I really want maximal emotion, like maximal expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte so, was- Can you do this in a robotic voice now? Initiating dramatic robotic voice. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte was a curious robot always exploring new so I'm circuits. Seeing, uh, Barrett here, calm down a little bit. Can you end the story, um, but do it in a singing voice? <sighs> and so Byte found another robot friend, and they lived circuitly ever after. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's a really powerful thing as well, in that now there's more emotion with the voice. Um, before, the one thing I would recommend is Pi AI because it was so powerful with the emotional aspect of the voice, meaning that you could interact with it and it would talk back to you in a voice that seemed very real, very conversational. Now we'll, we'll have this with uh, 4.0. So we have to think about the emotional connection that now people can have with their AI. 
and use that to the benefit of education, meaning that they could go through uh, an interview, they could go through a simulation and it would be that much more powerful. So we need to use this tool and we need to think about how can we integrate this in a way that really maximizes this emotional connection so that they can remember the content better, so that they can better learn it. Why? Because this ties in with motivation as well. When we can have an emotional connection, we can increase the motivation and what it is that we're teaching, their, their, their desire to learn. So again, we need to use this as a tool to improve education overall. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's cool. your day going? I'm uh, doing great. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci... Come risolviamo le equazioni limiari? Sicuramente sì. <laughs> Certainly yes. Great. It looks like it works. So the real translation aspect here of this new model is very powerful as well. That is another thing for us to consider as far as how this can be integrated for language learning. In academia, the, the, the biggest thing we, we've, we've found through research is the practice aspect but the real effective practice. Now with this new model, we'll be able to do that. So we need to consider how can this be integrated? How can we break people up to, to use the A model, again, in a way that still functions within our classroom? So we still have social learning, but we can also use the AI model to help us with that. So again, it, it's all about taking a step back and considering how we can integrate this in an effective way, not just for the sake of, bringing in technology, right? It's not just about that. It's about using it in a way that's effective and that will enhance the learning process. Hey, ChatGPT. Hello there, how's it going? It's going really well. Today, I'd really like your help solving a math problem. I'm all ears. What math problem can I help you tackle today? So I'm gonna write down a linear equation on a sheet of paper and I'll show you. And then I'd love your help working me through it. But importantly, don't tell me the solution, just help give me hints along the way. Got it. So, ChatGPT, what equation did I write down there? Ah, I see it now. You wrote down 3x plus 1 equals 4. Yep, Let's exactly. Work... So what's the first step I should take to try to solve this? The first step is to get all the terms with x on one side and the constants on the other side. So what do you think we should do with that plus one? Okay, I'm gonna try to subtract one from both sides and then I'll see what I get. Great idea. Perfect. Now, what do you get when you subtract one from both sides? Okay, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? Spot on. Now you've isolated the term with X on one side and it looks like three X equal three. What do you think we should do next to solve for x? I'm not sure. Can you give me another hint? Of course. You have 3x and you want to find the value of x. Think about what operation would undo multiplication. Is it subtraction? Close, but think of the opposite of multiplication. Because 3x means 3 times x. Okay, I think it's division. Let me try to divide both sides by 3 and let me see what I get. Bingo! Go ahead and divide both sides by three. Okay, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? It looks perfect. You've solved it, and x equals one. Nicely done. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there, what's up? How can I brighten your day today? Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna show you um, a selfie of what I look like, and then I'd like you to try to see what emotions I'm feeling based on how I'm looking. Sounds like a fun challenge. Go ahead and show me that selfie and I'll put my emotional detective hat on. Okay, so here's me. So what kind of emotions do you think I'm feeling? It looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful with a big smile and maybe even a touch of excitement. Whatever's going on, it seems like you're in a great mood. Care to share the source of those good vibes? 
Yeah, no, uh, the reason I'm in a really good mood is because we were doing a presentation showcasing how useful and amazing you are. <laughs> oh, stop it. You're making me blood. <laughs> Going back again to the emotional connection, we can see that now it can read emotion. It can actually start to tell, well, what type of emotion is the person having? Something to consider as far as how could we use that? Again, it'll take more testing. This isn't available yet, but it is supposed to be rolling out here within the next couple of weeks. And the big thing is that it's going to be free to everyone. Along with that, we also see the math capabilities greatly enhanced. And I like the way that they presented it because it wasn't just, hey, here's a math problem, solve it for me. No, it's, here's a math problem. Help me as I go through it. Be an assistive uh, person here for me, a, a tutor for me as I go through this. So it isn't just a matter of telling people that the tool exists, but it's ensuring that students develop the capabilities to use it properly, to use it effectively to enhance their learning. Again, it's a big difference between, oh, here's the AI, it's gonna solve my problems for me. No, it's here's the AI to help me develop my learning, but the students won't be able to figure that out on their own. Most of them won't, right? Because they're going for the fastest solution. So it, it really is this matter of us. We must ensure that we are helping the students to develop this understanding. And it needs to be very explicit, not implicit. It has to be very explicit. We need to give them specific training on how to use the AI properly. So this is where AI literacy really comes in. And this is what we have to dedicate time to, to ensure that our students have this capability. And it's something that can't just happen in one individual class. This has to be across the curriculum. All classes need, now need to really understand that this is a very powerful thing that students will be using, but it's up to us to help them to be able to develop the capabilities to use this in the most effective way along within the ethical way. So we have to develop that within our students. Of course, we have to develop that within ourselves. That's why you're watching videos like this, reading books, going to conferences, and helping one another. So together, we can make sure that we can enhance the overall educational experience for everyone. And remember, learning is for life. Mm -hmm.